Hey, what's up, y'all? Jukum here. Welcome back to yet another Pokémon Moveset crafting video. This time, we're gonna go over Vespiquen. Now, Vespiquen isn't a Pokémon who's like too popular. Like it, when you ask someone's favorite Pokémon, they don't, aren't usually gonna be like, "Yeah, I love Vespiquen. That's my favorite." But Vespiquen is definitely a really cool Pokémon that people do like a lot. And especially for Pokémon, people have had many creative ideas for Vespiquen. I know there's some people if they had to ask like, "Hey, if you had to have one archetype character in this game." They'd be like, and what Pokemon would you want to fill that archetype? I know quite a few of them would be like, oh, I want Vespiquen to fill in the blank thing, which I'll get to in a bit. But first off, let's go over what kind of Pokemon is Vespiquen. Vespiquen is classified as the Beehive Pokemon, being a Pokemon that is simultaneously a bee, but also carries her grubs in her beehive. It is the evolved form of Combi, which only female ones can evolve into, which is signified by the red dot on its head from both its pre-evolution and the, the top of its head when it's a Vespiquen, as you can see on the right. Female Vespiquen are pretty rare, so you know, when they wanted to raise one for the first time in like Diamond or Pearl, they probably got a male one and had no idea. I know I had that problem too. I literally had that exact same problem. Like, oh, I have raised it to like level 43 if I recall. And I'm like, wait, why isn't it evolving? And then I suffered the fate of millions that wanted to evolve a male combi when it's just a very useless Pokemon. <laughs> It's a bug slash flying type Pokemon that can be found in the Cinder region, usually through honey trees, by applying honey to the surface and in the game mechanics at least, waiting a few hours and seeing if you get it. It's a random chance, but oh, it seems like oh, it's a very common chance to get it, and a very common chance to get a male one. <laughs> Going back to its beehive on its abdomen, like I said, that is where it houses all of its grubs and it also controls its grubs and other combi through pheromones. Now this is very important to distinguish. The grubs and combi are two separate things, shown in different media, like attack order, sometimes in like the anime, which is one of its signature moves sometimes controls combi and then other media like the main games and the manga it actually controls its scrub so it's two different things altogether but in this moveset i do plan on incorporating both the grubs and the combi now being a somewhat niche pokemon vesiquin doesn't have too many appearances that are very notable it has appeared in pokemon platinum as part of the elite four member aaron's team now this one isn't probably very notable but for me it's very special because it's pokemon super mystery dungeon now after being the second boss of the game which is two b drill and three combi they still want to fight but then vesiquin kind of like breaks it up as their queen and tells them hey we should probably not be doing this right now basically it's just a character in the game who's just a, very minor but it's very notable because you, otherwise your character would probably die <laughs> now for how it would play now i brought up at the beginning of this video that vespiquen was a character people kind of want to see to fill in a specific archetype in poke in this case the puppet character because it can control both the combi and the grubs and with pheromones she would mainly control the grubs with the combi making sparse appearances throughout her moveset with her grubs she would be able to place them in a specific area and then be able to control them in specific ways that can either put pressure on the opponent start or continue combos or support Vespiquen herself. Also as a flying Pokemon who's always constantly hovering and don't worry she's not gonna be immune to lows all the time even though she's technically like off the ground she would definitely be able to have great air mobility and still be able to control said grubs while maintaining flight. Vespiquen doesn't have too much HP having only 540 but she definitely has the defensive moves to maintain longevity. And now this is probably counting as like two unique mechanics besides the one on the bottom but she does have a thing where she can place honey in field phase and that slows the opponent down. As much as like a speed down usually would but it's only in specific areas if the opponent steps on it. Obviously characters who like to be in the air a lot won't be affected too much, especially with someone like Subtile. Yeah, but all around she's a very technical character I would say. Going back to her commanding, as mentioned she has a lot of command groups that can either attack, defend, or heal her. She would be able to move with her grubs sometimes, having very little end lag, so she would be able to like maintain the pressure from moving the grubs or being able to move the grubs multiple times, start off combos, etc. As I put it, very dynamic I would say. I wish I said that originally. <laughs> but as a puppet character this means the grubs can be attacked and defeated, though that does leave less focus on Vespiquen herself and she could always pull out new ones whenever she wants. Going to her notable general attacks and traits, I feel like I really need to shorten that someday. Besides her grubs, Vespiquen can attack in various ways through various arm strikes, tackles, her abdomen hive, honey, or even wind since you know flying type. Now this is a pretty long list all things considered and this is a pretty long like set of moves and all you need to be so I guess if this video is like 15 minutes uh that's why <laughs> I really need to stop like losing my breath part way through things like <laughs> Now, starting off with Vespiquen's 8Y, I had the idea for swinging her arm upward, and this would create a wind barrier that would protect her for a bit. Right after, a blade of wind would launch out, and that would hit any opponents. Anyone who's hit on the ground gets knocked back, and anyone who's in the air gets launched away. But if the grubs are out when they're, when they're launched away, 
this can combo from the grubs. And I even had like a cool idea if like they whiff the 8Y that like a gust of wind would push them away both grounded and in the air so even if they're blocking. So it wouldn't do any damage even on hit but it would push them away to give Vespaquin some room. It would be pretty minus though but it would be really really good to get the opponent off you if you need to like to have time to set up grubs, backdash, anything to maintain space and prevent the opponent from getting a lot of momentum. Now for her 8X, like every 8X she's immune to lows after a certain point but for the startup I thought okay she would go up from the ground a little bit and then her grubs would come around, spiral around her, and she would like dive. Okay, so my idea was she would dive down and then up a bit. So she's spiraling like that, and it's a multi hit that gets the opponent off of her. Anyone in the ground rolls back, while anyone who's in the air or gets crit gets launched into the air, starting off a combo. As a flying type, Vesuquin would definitely have the niche of something like Scizor or Charizard, where she'd be able to hover in the air. Unlike the o those characters who can hover in the air, she doesn't actually descend. She does have a like a stricter limit, I think, because I think Scizor and Charizard can go longer depending on how high they are so she can only do it for a max of four seconds she can cancel it and then start covering again through pressing R repeatedly. Now, just because you can use it repeatedly doesn't mean she can, like, reset the four seconds. This is four seconds total in the air. So if she resets it, if she starts for two seconds, then goes down, presses R to go down a bit to, like, start hovering at, like, a lower height, then she can only do that uh, second hover for two seconds. She can also attack during the hover and press R after it to start hovering once again. Now for her stances. Nothing too special here compared to other characters. It'd be similar to Gengar's and Chandler's, where with her high stance, she can move and is also immune to low, while the exact opposite is for the low stance where she's immune to highs and she can also move. Now for Vespaquin's counterattack. This is going to be a strictly defensive tool to get the opponent off her. She kind of like spins her body as she like after charging and then swings her ab abdomen hive horizontally so like whoop that's pro it's probably that's probably a bad example but anyway you probably can understand what i mean basically when uncharged it's similar to septile's counterattack where if it's uncharged they just kind of roll away however on crit or when fully charged it does launch the opponent somewhat far away knocking them down so while it doesn't combo unless it's there is a wall and even then that might be awkward for vespaquin unless her grubs are out this does give vespaquin the chance to set up her grubs or position them correctly in any way shape or form all around just helps the opponent get off of her however this move does have a weakness it is a mid high so that means it can be anti now, despite her like hovering a bit when she's like swinging her abdomen, obviously you'll be like, oh, she's she looks like she's near. No, she's still considered grounded in that case. But she can still get punished and have the opponent's momentum continue onward. Now, for Vespaquin's field page grab, I had the idea, okay, I wanted to like show the grubs off more besides just like the regular attacks. So I was like, okay, I'll put them in the grab animations. So I just had the thought of, okay, they just like grab them, push them away. It's just it's just pushing them, like grabbing them, and like <laughs> they just go up into the air with them and just basically just pull up like Bane and Batman and break their back and hit them on the ground. Something like that. I'm like, oh my gosh, that'd be funny. <laughs> now, the one problem I do have with the field grab is that I don't think any field grab causes a knockdown. So I think it would just kind of awkwardly, if I wanted to have it like this, it would just kind of awkwardly make them roll back a bit instead of like knocking them down like you would expect them to. But I guess it's fine. It's not the most absurd thing in the world. We have my champ 2i. And then for a dual face grab, something similar would happen. The grubs would put them into the air near Vespaquin in that case. But then Vespaquin would just launch a giant ball of honey at them, launching them away and also spraying down honey on field. In general, in field phase, she would have many projectiles that could either apply honey or she would use her uh, order moves to apply pressure. And speaking Speaking of her order moves, the first one, let's get into 5A, attack order. This is the initial order to actually summon her grubs. She launches them out of her abdomen hive, obviously, and then they go somewhere around mid-range, so somewhat slowly, so like, like if you want to hear the beat buzzing noise, i sorry for your ears. <laughs> Afterwards, Vesuka can then control their movements by making them go diagonally left, up, diagonally left down, di I, I just realized I'm doing this the wrong way, diagonally up, diagonally down to the left, or diagonally up diagonally down to the right. Now every time the grubs move they deliver one hit and they can combo into each other if given multiple commands. They can combo in this way whether it's a grounded or aerial opponent as grounded opponents just get pushed around but it would be quick enough to where they get hit by the next hit and they could even be pushed in to Vespaquin so she can start comboing them with her herself. Same thing if they're near. This is a move that is very much a combo starter or a combo extender and is also very good for pressure. However she can only move them three times so after the third one they go away. Now when the grubs are staying in place they do deal small amounts of damage per second when the opponent like passes through them or stays in them. This isn't really too much, it'd probably be like, I don't know, 10 per second, but it can add up over time, though obviously it does no hit stun and can't KO. Imagine if that KO'd, it'd be so absurd to have a like slow moving thing that just stays there and like you have to just respect it for all eternity. Like I mentioned before, very combo heavy tool, very useful, and because of that, this one doesn't have too much end lag off of each order. In field phase, the grubs don't actually go into the air. They do go diagonally left and diagonally right though to cover space, and they can go diagonally left back towards Vespaquin in that case. 
So it's very good in that. But obviously no air movement, only in Dual Phaser can do that. As I mentioned though when going over the Grub commands, the Grubs can be attacked. They go away after taking a certain amount of damage, but even though they take a, a certain amount of damage, they don't actually like block things just by being there. So like projectiles will still damage them, but they will go through them. Phase shifts also cause them to go away, but like if you lose the phase shift, it's not like your Vespa coin where you win it and you can just set it up again anyway right away. And in the last weakness this move has, she can only move the grubs three times in total before they just disappear and then she has to reset them. Now that was a lot to go over for just like one move, but don't worry, we have much more of that. Going over the next one, 6A Power Gem. Now this seems like a simple move at first. She's like, oh, you know, she shoots a beam. And I know it's weird because it's called Power Gem, but don't worry, it's actually a beam. <laughs> she shoots out a, I say, medium-sized beam from her hands. It doesn't really do much else. It does phase shift. It went in field phase, but it's more like Suicune's Aurora Beam more than anything instead of like a true beam like Chandelure, so it can also be deleted. But... When the grubs are out, she automatically locks on to wherever the grubs are. Afterwards, she hits the grubs, and then the grubs reflect the beam into a different angle depending on where they are. So this can make two hitboxes of the beam. This deflected blast always goes forward. And then depending on where they hit, it can go either diagonally up if the grubs are down, or diagonally down if the grubs are up. And if the grubs are at their initial height from attack order, the beam just goes straight up, like a right angle. I think I have that word for word on there. <laughs> of course, there are slight angle changes depending on like where they get hit from the beam, but all around, that's the general idea. I mean, slight deviations, I mean, it's pretty specific sometimes because obviously you gotta like take into the fact, okay, when is Vesper kind of using the move? Is she, are the grubs right here and cheats right here? So in that case, it would just go straight up and down like skinny like that. But if Vesper Cut is like right here, it's gonna go like whoosh like that. This is especially important since so she can use this move in the air with the J6A input and then go back to hovering with R. Now what makes this move really good is besides the area control, the beams actually combo into each other. Unless it's at the initial height where it makes a right angle, this always launches them away. So it'd be like a beam that hits twice and then launches them away so you get more time to like set up other stuff. But if it is the right angle input, it actually launches them into the second beam and the second beam launches them into Vespa Quen, so she can use that as a seller or a combo starter. But it is a little more risky since the opponent does have to be like near Vespa Quen in order to actually get that combo start. And doing this beam up close would be very minus if not punishable. Only sometimes would you be able to make it a true block string from one beam to the other depending on distance. So yeah, all around, a very, very useful move for especially area control. That's the main idea for this move is area control. But it's also good for combos and keeping up the pressure. Oh, and I forgot to mention, but the grubs do not go away when they are hit. Yeah, just somehow they just like live a giant blast of light, but they get tapped like once from some other character and they just die. <laughs> now, next up is the second order command from Vespaquen. Now, an issue with attack order is that the grubs do take damage, but they do not absorb the attack. So they're just like not be able to take any projectile. It would just go through, but they would still get hit. So, for a defend order, it would be the opposite. They wouldn't lose health too much, but they would also be able to block those attacks. In this case, they form a small, like, shield. And this shield obviously gets placed wherever they are currently, so like, even if it's in the air. Now this shield, they don't actually get damaged by. What I mentioned before, when they said they can get hurt, is if they uh, get hit by piercing moves or projectiles that have too high priority, so like, a beam. If the grubs do get defeated in this way, they do go away. Essentially, this is a counter that blocks a set area so that a Vespa Queen can either approach or get away. She can also use this move in the air with the J4A input, and she can just block her aerial approach, which is really cool. She can even, like, stop anti-air attempts. Now this shield is slightly bigger bigger than a stationary attack order, where they can walk and jump through without getting hit stun or KO'd, but they still do take 10 damage per second. A great move in dual phase that can help her approach and to atta start attacking after absorbing an attack, but it's especially good in field phase due to all the projectiles. Now the opponent can dodge around the shield in field phase more, but that's what makes it good in both field and dual. In dual phase, there's limited room, so they have to like, if they want to get through it, they have to walk through it, but they also have to be aware that it can be cancelled and then into attack order. In field phase, there's more projectile blocking opportunities. Now while Vespa Queen can't move her grubs during the shield, she can use Flory to cancel it and then do the uh, attack order anyway. So essentially, she can kind of like parry an attack from far away if they do like a physical attack that strikes through it. And to just mention how this protects Vespa Queen if she's like up close to the uh, grubs, if something like that's kind of like long range hits the grubs first before it would hit Vespa Queen, then it definitely just would have Vespa Queen be protected. And obviously this move does nothing if there's no grubs out in the beginning with. Now for the 8 a where Vespa Queen decides it's time to beat you to death, beat up is a move that calls upon two combi from behind Vespa Queen. They fly in a straight path one after the other and they go across the full screen. They're decently fast and prevent opponents from approaching from the air, tackling them if they get in the way. This is a very simple move that's very 
very effective when combined with the orders as this controls a lot of space and can lock down the opponent to stay far away. Now the combi do combo into each other but they both launch the opponent upwards so even if only one hits it still leads to a combo opportunity. And because the combi come from behind Vespa Quinn, this means that opponents who are trying to cross her up by jumping over her actually do get hit. The combi are strictly used to hit opponents who are in the air so they cannot hit any grounded opponents at all. And this also means Vespa Quinn is left pretty vulnerable if she whiffs it. But a good Vespa Quinn user would be able to use moves like Defend Order to protect her front side. Now like I said this is a very simple move and because of that it's also like the shortest slide. <laughs> but next up we have 2A Heal Order. Now like Defend Order this move is completely useless if you don't have your grubs out already. But when she uses it she does command the grubs to go from wherever they are to Vespa Quinn herself. So they do lose their positioning. However when they do come to her she does recover 10 recoverable HP per second. This starts as soon as they get to her and can be done indefinitely. Now if the grubs are pretty far away it does take a while before the healing process gets started because they take longer to get to her. And as another benefit to this move, every time there's a healing interval, she also gains brief counter armor. This gives it much greater utility besides just healing. She can also use this move in the air, and she can also move left and right very slowly, both on the ground and in the air. Now since this is indefinite, she does have to manually cancel the move, whether that's with R while on the ground to block or glide in the air. When she's done healing, the grubs stay in place to where she was. Now because she does get counter armor during each healing interval, and she can cancel the move, this does mean sometimes she would be able to like parry the move and punch the opponent in a cool way. This also means the opponent has to kind of time their moves right and hope they do not like mistime it and hit their CA frames and then get punished for it. Now she definitely wouldn't have like no end lag at the end of heal order, but she would have like enough to where she would be able to punch slower moves. All around a very great supportive move. Next up is the JA though, Struggle Bug. With it, Vespa Quinn struggles and releases like a light green wave all around her. This is like a kind of like a barrier projectile. Not only does this get the opponent off of her by launching them away, but it also applies an attack down so she maintains longevity. The launch doesn't knock them down, it does make them air attack, but if they are near a wall this can potentially start combos. Now this move doesn't do much damage, but it has decent range, but it can be charged to be slightly stronger, have more range, and apply an attack down even more. Now while charging the move, and when using the move in general, Vespa Quinn does hover in the air. After the move connects, Vespa Quinn can also cancel into a glide. She can't do this if she whisks the move though. She is able to use other attacks, but she won't be able to use Struggle Bug again until she hits the ground. Lastly, Vespa Quinn can also cancel the charged part of the move and go back into a glide if she thinks she's in a bad position. This also baits the opponent to blocking and can get you away from the opponent if they continue to block as you like decide to glide away. And for the last A move, we have a release a sweet scent. Now this is a very quick move to charge and for good reason. This is basically Vespaquin's way of getting rid of her grubs whenever she wants to if they're in a bad position or various other purposes. After releasing it she releases a scent and after the scent is released the grubs go straight to her in a line. The grubs going in a straight path do have a hitbox which launches the opponent towards Vespaquin. On air hits for the combos they also launch them high into the air towards Vespaquin. So while you do get rid of your grubs this can be used to extend combos or try to knock the opponent when they least expect it when they're in between the grubs and you. So like they're right here, Vespa Quinn's right here, grubs are here, and then Vespa Quinn's just like, ha, JK, you got bodied. Of course, this move does have the risk if the opponent does block it, since then you won't have your grubs out anymore and you have to redo it again, especially since as it's on block, they kind of get pushed towards you a bit. But of course, you'd be very much less minus if the grubs are far away and the opponent's already pretty close to Vespa Quinn. Another very simple but effective move if you want to reposition your grubs, or if the opponent goes past them and thinks they're safe and then you catch them off guard. Now, going into Vespa Quinn's synergy burst. Now, obviously, she doesn't have a mega evolution, so she would just be pretty. <laughs> Now, this is a very long set of text, and I feel like I'm going to die trying to explain it all. Aesthetically, Vespa Quinn would have a yellow-green glow going around it, with lots of like symbols of like honeycombs flying around it too. She also gets various move enhancements. For attack order, she simply just gets one extra attack order, so instead of it ending at 3, she can do it at 4 now. For defend order, I never really mentioned this, but it's not perfect projectile like priority to go over anything that isn't a B, but in this case, it would start being able to do that, only not being able to be blocked by stuff that is like Chandelure's laser. And then for the last order move heal order would just heal more per second i say maybe like i don't know maybe like 15 or 20 you already kind of already passively heal in burst mode this is just like a case if you were like i want to get my hp up quick and the opponent's on Oki too, and I want my like uh, heal order uh, grubs to be like in place where I am at the moment. So it's good for that. And then lastly for beat up, beat up will get a third combi to fly by too, making sure it has a lot more area control so you can't jump right away after the second combi. Now, oh my god, I can't believe I wrote so I blame Mutator for this. He thought of this. I thought of something simple, and then he was like, hey, what if we made it like <laughs> half of this is actually the startup <laughs> and not the actual animation itself. It's not like a 15 minute cutscene of the of whatever her super move is. No, it's just a 15 minute cutscene of the freaking starting part. Okay, so in simple terms, the main idea for this move is to set up a wall of combi in front of a Vespa Quinn. Aesthetically, her eyes go red because I thought I'd be cool like in the anime in the top right. This wall is red armored. 
However, Vespaquen herself is not red armored. It's just a separate thing from Vespaquen. But if it does get pierced, she is still left wide open, even if she herself didn't get hit by that piercing. Rate. Now, unlike most other burst attacks, this is a counter-based burst attack, so they have to actually hit the wall. Now, whether they do get hit or grabbed, a series of six combi from the wall fly forward in a pattern that goes from low to high, low to high. Now, the low one isn't actually low, but it's like considered like lower of the two. The other one's high, so uh, the opponent can't just like jump over it free. These go one by one and travel full screen, so this is also a really good move to use against projectile users. Now, for this move, the transition only happens when they get hit by the first combi. For all the others, uh, it doesn't transition. It does a decent amount of damage like certain other moves do. Like I guess for example, Sceptile's Burst Attack, if it's at the very end, it doesn't transition, but still does a good amount of damage. But it's also good for crushing the opponent who's far away, like if they were said projectile users. Especially if they block it all, it does a decent amount on the chip damage. Or if they decide to jump over the first one and then get hit by the second one, it all combos into each other in like five separate hits that are all pretty powerful. Of course, if you dodge more than just the first one and you only get hit by like, I don't know, the last two, it won't deal as much damage. And also, the last one always face shifts from uh, dual to field. In field phase, it would just reset them. Now, just from the startup, I find this to be a very unique burst attack, especially since you can like use it for multi purposes, multiple purposes by having it keep up the pressure on the opponent from far away if they did trigger it with a projectile. And if they're up close, it's a very good handy dandy tool to make sure the opponent can always just get away with a free Oki opportunity since it would be frame one for the wall to come up. It's also really good because it's a red armor thing where Vespa Quinn doesn't actually get hurt because it's separate from her, even if she does have a oh, blind spot behind her. Now, this move does have a weakness if nothing happens uh the wall will at one point like crumble and by crumble i mean like they, the, the combi just all fall on the ground be like oh we failed oopsie doodle sorry my queen i'm out peace <laughs> but yeah after if that happens then this queen is like very vulnerable and she can get punished all right now that half the text is gone now let me actually explain what the trend what the aesthetics would be <laughs> for the animation so like i said if they get hit by the first combi who that's charging forward then they would get knocked back and then the tr transition would go to the five other combi surrounding the opponent and bring them upward for the transition the screen would just fade to black before coming back real quick and when the screen comes back it shows that they're in the cave that has like honey slathered on the walls. Oh, this is similar to an area in the anime actually. And then from an opening, similar to the top right image, Vesuvian would show up and then command her combi with the tack order. And then similar to the bottom image, a lot of a large, uh, like an army of combi would surround the opponent and then start blasting them with lasers. Now when it comes to like camera angles, I can only imagine like the combi when they're like blasting them, the camera just like spins around as it shows them like getting pelted from side to side all, all over the place. They make it just make it like a little more active instead of just like, oh, beam, beam, beam all coming down from one place in one camera angle at all makes it more dynamic after a small bit the combi stop and then vesquin herself takes charge and charges at the opponent picking them up from underneath them and going up and then slamming them back down to the ground by throwing them down now they are covered in honey in this case and now they are stuck they're really thinking oh i've made a terrible decision hitting that combi wall right now <laughs> and then to finish the move off vesquin would then raise her arm and call upon a large amount of honey that would just like slosh onto them and like crush i get uh, can you get crushed by honey <laughs> think of it just like a very heavy downpour of honey in that case which then launches them back down to the field phase but in this case the field phase is also covered with a giant splash of honey in uh in the middle of the arena where they fall into now the honey mechanic like i said applies a speed down kind of if they're standing in it but in this case i feel like it's fair because if you're landing a burst attack that your opponent has to attack you with they have to do it 100 percent they always have to be aware of that and it's also very risky if the investment coin player just decides, oh, I'm going to do it, and then they fail, and then they get a big punish on them. But yeah, it's just very, it's very fair in that case that you get so much reward off of this, even if the opponent does indeed start to block it. Like, the opponent can just block it, and they, like, it'll deal pressure, but it's not like you're taking a full-on burst attack, and also the honey's on the ground. Maybe a large amount of honey, too, so the opponent just kind of has to walk at least a little bit, even if they do decide to jump right away. All around, I think it's a very cool move. And also, thank you, Mutator, again, for uh, helping with me with this part, because uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't even think about, like, the high and low part, or, like, how the, like, some other functions in this move, too. I forgot exactly what, but, like, that was the main thing. All right, now that all of this well all these moves are over we can finally go to something more simple like the references which thankfully i didn't put too much in comparison to the others all right first off attack order defend order heal order they basically work like they do in the games where they all either guess what attack defend or heal who would have guessed for beat up calling upon different pokemon actually like it's exactly how it works in the games too where it actually calls upon the like party of pokemon to help attack the opponent with you can also see in the image on the right where it's shown in the manga which is like hey we're going to beat you to death struggle bug in the main games is a wide ranged attack that can hit multiple opponents and also applies a special attack down to them so that's how that correlates to this game and then sweep send itself 
doesn't really reference what it does in the games, but it references Vesper Pen's Pokedex entries, where it manipulates the grubs with her uh, pheromones. Sweet Sand, the main games, also has an outside battle effect where it can attract other Pokemon. And the final reference is that her brush attack, I think I mentioned it, it the cave area, like everything about that general startup attack with the beams and the attack order, uh, that's a reference to the anime. Even the combi wall is a reference to the anime where there's like a part where there's just a giant like combi wall. It wouldn't be as big as that wall for that burst attack, but it's still a somewhat reference to it. Now to summarize Vespaquen, <laughs> I guess to start off with, Vespaquen has a lot, a lot of moves that can control space. Whether that's with the attack order, power gem, beat up, sweet scent, and then the field phase honey too. Like even defend order a bit too. I didn't write that down, but defend order too is just like a giant wall. It also has great survivability too, even like with its 540 HP because it has defend order to block attacks, heal, heal order to like heal a bit. Uh, and also have like counter frames on like parry attacks. And then in Struggle Bug's case, it gives them an attack down. So even when you do get hit, it does less damage to you. It's Glide also lets it have great air mobility to like dodge attacks, other types of stuff you could do with the Glide. You can even attack out of the Glide with all the order moves. She does have good tools to get the opponent off of her too, even when she wants the opponent to get away from her if she doesn't have her grubs up. She has a decent counter attack, even if it can get anti-aired. Uh, Struggle Bug in general, like I mentioned, is good for getting the opponent off of her. Her 8Y can push them away because of the wind effect I mentioned. And then lastly, her burst attack is just very unique in that it can be used to retaliate against the opponent if they're getting too caught up in what they're doing and putting too much pressure on the on uh, Vespa Quinn and only to just get punished in the long run. This is especially the case for projectile users because she can send out the combi and launch them and then have time to set up attack order. Now the downside to this I feel like I mentioned a lot she has a lot of like good things to like control space but she does have a bad time if she can't get her grubs out. I mentioned she does have some tools to get off her but for in like her case it's a counter attack and then also struggle bug is also useful but she needs time to like jump and use it too. She also would need time to use her AY. So she does have good tools to get them off them, but not all the time can she use those tools and sometimes she struggles when the opponent just continuously rushes her down. A big glaring weakness I did mention is also that the grubs can be defeated, whether that's in attack order or defend order if it's a high priority or piercing move. She needs time to set it up and attack order would take not too long to put the grubs out, but probably a decent amount. Just so she can't be like, wah, 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 haha, I'm free, I control space. <laughs> Why am I the lamest person ever? And while she does have a lot of air options, being in the air is a lot less safe than being on the ground because you don't have a block button. And while she does have defend order, if the grubs are not in the air at the time, she can get like anti-aired or like any, like any long range, uh, like JY or JX, something like that. Like, I guess the only thing I think about is like Septile's JY I think long range, but something like that. For attack order, it can't go like directly up. It can only go diagonally. And in field phase, it can't even go in the air at all. It also goes away after three commands. And then lastly, also related to burst attack, while it is very unique in what it does this also means it's the only burst deck in the game where it doesn't do an attack guaranteed to come out and it's usually safe for most burst attacks but in this case if the opponent just does nothing they are going to get a guaranteed punish no matter what you're not even going to get like chip damage because the combis aren't even going to be attacking any piercing moves knocks the combi wall down and after a while uh the combi wall crumbles by itself or combi or vespacon can get hit from behind stuff like that but yeah that's what if vespacon was in pokemon i thought this, was, this is a, i mentioned it at the very beginning vespacon is a character people want to see with uh, one specific archetype and that's the puppet character because we don't have a puppet character in pokemon and i think with a move set similar to this or exactly like this, hire me Bandai, uh, <laughs> Vespaquen would be really, really sick addition to Pokémon. Now, she's not, like, too popular of a Pokémon in comparison to stuff like, I don't know, like, Greninja, but she's still, like, a very cool Pokémon. People wouldn't, they think of bu cool bug flying types, despite that being a very common type. They sometimes, they, they like to think of Vespaquen. They also like to think of, like, Yan Mega, but Vespaquen is very high up there. In that. I hope you guys all enjoyed watching this video. It's probably long, because I am recording for one sec, two hours. <laughs> Because I, I just failed at talking a million times. Oh my god. Like, look at all these moves. I have to, like, nail it and be like, I'm OCD too, so I gotta get it the right, exactly the right way. Uh, but yeah, if you enjoy my pain and misery, except you won't be able to see half of it, uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> no, but seriously, if you can do that, much appreciated. Please let me know in the comments what Pokemon you'd like to see. I always take requests. Best of Pokemon is more of a personal one that I wanted to do because it's, like I said, a very popular Pokemon. People want to see in Pokemon for that archetype. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video and see ya.